Outlook Podcast. For you at the Outlook Podcast. Just for you. We're talking to cool people. Yeah, that was crisp. That was really crisp. Hey guys, welcome back to the Outlook Industries podcast. It's your host, Trevor Johnson, back here getting another one done. How you doing, Sean? I'm doing good. Is this your first one at Woodward? This is my second one at Woodward. Who's the other one? The other one was Taki. Hey. Yeah, Taylin. We did Taylin just a little bit ago. Um, I am super excited to have you on here. I'm glad that you could take some time out to uh, come and talk to me. It's yeah, gonna definitely. be awesome. I love this kind of more long form content. I did some way back when, like two, three years ago. I had like the Funk Bros on. I did one with Dom. Uh, Dom. I've been hanging out with Dom too much. Yeah. Eddie Quaylar <laughs> and, uh, oh my God, he's the boy. And I can't think of his name. Whatever. It never dropped because yeah. I went to watch it back and it was just too low quality. Gotcha. But yeah, that that tends to happen. I don't know. I've been working on it, trying to get this figured out for sure. But Plus, uh, I heard you have like audio engineers in the family and stuff. Yeah, kind of that kind of sort of stuff. I know plenty of audio engineers. So because my sister has a producer, so he helped, hooked me up with everything. So how do I sound? You sound great. You sound very podcasty. Yeah. Well, so that's how it works. Um, today's episode is brought to you by Tushy. By Tushy. Yeah. But first off, let's kind of talk about like how you got into scootering. Where did you grow up? kind of your backstory my backstory uh so scootering i guess would start from action sports and the start of that was i played a ton of ice hockey growing up and so inline it was the 90s so we were doing inline me and my brother yeah um skated a little bit because tony hawk came out but i never really got any anything too crazy on the skateboard um and then scooters came out like the year 2000 and I didn't get one the first Christmas but I pretty much stole my brothers the yeah. whole year so I finally got my own in 2001 and it was just like jumping around the neighborhood and we thought we were like inventing scootering yeah yeah like uh my homie on the block his older brother could tail whip like after a year and we were like oh my god he's There's gotta no be way. the best in the world yeah but just like hopping around doing pogos on the back wheel and any ledges you just jump and run into them yeah and probably a did that for like two three years finally landed a tail up after like two three years yeah and then realized that there was a skate park riding distance away i was still pretty young but parents let me ride out there yeah and um started to finally start progressing and then there was a scooter crew in arizona called arizona scooter crew asc yeah it's now pretty much defunct yeah but i got to ride with them a couple of times and they're always telling me to get on like Scooter Resource and check out YouTube videos, but I didn't have internet until I was in high school sometime. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so. How old I, are you now? I'm, I'm going to be 30 next month. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. So nice. I'm up there. I think there's John Ray's. He's still riding. He might be over 30. Dan Barrett, I think he's beat me by a month, so he might finally be 30. Yeah. Um, But Andrew Bruce are too, so I don't know any other people that are in the 30 club scootering. There might be pretty soon three yeah, maybe no, four like of the, us the founders man like yeah. how long have you been riding so that would make it i'll i pretty much count 2001 because i was scootering even though yeah. i didn't know what the real tricks were yeah so about 20 years but for like good riding probably about 2006 i rode more with the asc guys and then eventually started watching like cody donovan dsc footage yeah and then from there finally real parts started coming out I remember getting my first 20 wide bars and being like, I'm on a BMX by a crank and turndowns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So well, that was a big game changer. It's so interesting seeing, like, you and some of the, like, more OG riders ride because you have, like, such a different style than all, like, the new kids. How would you define it? It's I got like, some in my head. It's kind of, I don't know. Yeah, it's more, like, technical tricks and more, like, a. it feels like a bike. Watching you is like watching very like it's like watching bmxers that's Lots how of BMX influence. i would definitely describe it is the early days m way more of our influence for like the whole scooter community was bmx also with like the smaller bars and then yeah the no square deck ends it was pretty much if you want to do grinds or stuff uh pegs were fair a lot more common yeah and then just with the bars how low they were great for tucks we had like the mer grab 
yeah we're talk mer and uh i know personally i was mostly just watching bmx edits and scooter edits and then this generation really seems to with the bigger decks and the square deck ends yeah kind of more vibing with the skate style yes and even like i can't get too tall of bars because i just cr- like lean over them yeah so anytime i get in a bowl i'm just chesting them yeah so i do want to i do want to get on the current trend because it looks so cool yeah but uh i just can't help it i'm still leaning over the bars as if it was a, a razor a little scooter. a little yeah full yeah the razor. style i see today is so sick just like almost straight up and down and the bars are like in your gut so you can still flick some bars but yeah but they're definitely bigger people are riding like 30 tall bars and stuff yeah like definitely way bigger which is super interesting what has been like the biggest change you've seen in the scooter industry since you've been a part of it um i mean the i mean it's all changed yeah I, that's I, true the biggest change i guess availability of parts and like even myself i'm here at woodward and i have parts that should be working on the front and i'm like man this feels like the old days but my wheels rubbing and it shouldn't be so i had to like cram in some extra spacers files some stuff yeah i was like it's 2021 i shouldn't have to do that like this fork fits 30 wide wheels i have 30 wide wheels there should be no rubbing yeah but But, there still is a little bit yeah so it's it's pretty cool that just the abundance of parts yeah Uh, obviously instagram changed it so oh my god clips are coming out the same day that are killer how do you feel about that how do you feel about the whole like switching to instagram more than like people doing like video parts i mean I might be the wrong one to ask because I never was a big video part guy. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like, uh, I have some footage I've been sleeping on for a long time with the vault. Um, yeah. Me and Ruben Rodriguez were getting a lot of stuff done, and I was hyped on it. But once he got injured, yeah, the project kind of lost its fizzle or fizzled out. Yeah. And so I will release it, but just to be able to look back on it. Like, I don't think I'll truly be proud. There's a couple clips in there that I still like, but yeah. overall it's just going to be, uh, I'm calling it something about kombucha because it's fermented clips now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, So overall it'll just be really nice to look back and as like almost a time capsule of remembering everywhere I went from when I lived in LA. Oh, right. Yeah. Because how long did you live in LA? Uh, I think it was about five, six years. Five, six yeah. years. Were you at, did you grow up in Arizona? Yeah, I grew okay, up in so Arizona. You grew up in Arizona, went to LA, and then came back. Yeah, so I was uh, the original scooter director here for the summers. Oh, and right. I was trying to get a year-round job at Woodward because I mean, yeah, I just wanted to live, breathe, eat action sports. Yeah. And after I think my second summer, the vault came out, and I knew Shelby Grimness from Arizona. Yeah. And I met Arthur and all those guys, um, and uh, they said, "Oh, they might be able to get you a job." Yeah. Thought I had a burp coming. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I moved out. They pranked me and said that they would interview me like the next week. Like I drove out, lived in my truck for a little bit. Yeah. And they're like, okay, cool. Yeah, we might have some opening like next month. Like come back and see us. And I was like, I just moved what? out here in my truck. Yeah. <laughs> and then like within 30 seconds, the GM was like, I can't do that. I'm just joking. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're hired. And then uh, I was still planning to come here in the summers. Yeah. But uh, they offered me a promotion. And a couple other perks to stay at the vault so I wouldn't disappear for three months. Oh, gotcha. And I think I hit up Woodward one more time. Like, any openings for full time? Like, yeah. Because otherwise I, I got a promotion and I can't make it out. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that's cool. How long have you been working at the vault then? And what do you kind of do for them? The vault would have been like 2015 or 2014. I used to remember. I know it was like October 6th. Yeah. And it was either like 2014, 2015. Gotcha. Uh, just because I came in right before the holiday season, so. Yeah, gotcha. It was, it was good money, overtime hours, and tons yeah. of shipping all day, every day. So plenty to awesome. do. Plenty yeah. to keep you busy, for sure. And you had a two-part question. What was the other part? The other part was, like, what do you do for the vault? Like, what is your job? Uh, right now, I'm just doing uh, team managers, some blog stuff, and um, just kind of hanging out. Not Since I moved to Arizona, just yeah. not really too much work. What is um, what is kind of like your responsibilities as team manager? Uh, right now we're trying to kind of kick it up a notch and do a little bit more support. We are yeah. just a shop, so yeah, we're not going to be like sending people to Europe and doing these giant stuff. But we yeah. have some we have some goals out there. I know we'll do like sig stick stickers if people want. Yeah. Um, uh, posters. Uh, my man Matisse is taking over the Instagram. He's killing it with that. Yeah, Matisse. 
and then uh, I ride for him too. So I just yeah keep on riding doing that. But it's nice ship out care packages. Make yeah, sure everyone's sure. happy. How do you go about like getting a rider on the team? Like how does that process go? And what it do you think about changes it? Changes yeah. a lot. Like um, I added Liam and Colin who are here. Yeah. Most of the team was already established before I got on. I think yeah. I added Dan, Dan Barrett, Liam, and Colin. I think that's all I added. Yeah. If there's anyone else I've added so far, apologies. But uh, Colin and Liam, they got on just through hitting us up and having good edits. Gotcha. And uh, I would kind of change how I do things now is I want to make sure I meet people mm-hmm. and do it first. Uh, just because when I came onto the vault, uh, I had a little bit of a following like people knew me through woodward and just from being around for the growth of the industry like I knew, yeah i knew a lot of the brands but uh being on the youtube channel really bumped my own social media and stuff yep. just because i'm all right behind the camera and um i thought with the powerhouse that is the vault that just if we share your clips you're gonna blow up yeah and unfortunately we didn't blow up liam or colin but you guys should definitely follow them yeah they're shredders and uh so that's cool so yeah, I hadn't met Liam before, but he's he kills it. Yeah, he's good. He's, yeah, he's he really originally good. was a lot more park, so he's getting definitely his versatility. And have you ever met Colin? Uh, I was trying to get him out this week, but his flights. Were I this. I have not. No, they. F- he was in, he's like staying someplace else. Yeah. And then he would have had to fly into Bakersfield, so that's more expensive. So yeah. unfortunately, Colin couldn't come. Yeah. But man, that guy, he's probably the nicest person in scootering. Oh really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. There's a ear to ear grin all the time. He's oh, so cool. those, those are the people that you want to sponsor for sure, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that we just got lucky on that one because just saw his clips. And yeah. And I liked his style. And so that was mostly my call. Uh, mm-hmm. We got a couple of announcements coming up that are definitely um, more from the owner of the shop, people around the shop, and then yeah. just more of a prediction of where these writers will be as well as what have they done. Yep. So people will be stoked on our next two or three ads. And then the fourth, we're going to kind of open it up to the team and gotcha. and see who they want deserve to, it. Yeah. They want to bring on kind of yeah. thing. Where did the grape slushies thing came from? Come the grape from? slushies thing came from, I answer this every once in a while. Yeah. Um, did you ever see the TV show Reno 911? Uh, no. Uh, so it's like a fake cop show. Kay. And there's a comedian in it, Nick Swartzen who is also in Grandma's Boy, who just had really funny roles. And then growing up in scootering, uh, the the gay humor was very strong. Yeah. Yep. Like, it's still there a little bit, but before it was it was big. It was big. And uh, just Nick Swartzen, the characters he'd play in Reno 911, a lot of the time he was a, a gay rollerblading prostitute. Oh, gotcha. And he went to jail once, and then he said he started some gangs. It was like the Kitties and the Grape Slushies. Oh, yeah. And at the time, I think it was in seventh grade, and me and my homies, we just thought he was hilarious. And we're like, dude, that's our scooter crew. We're the grape slushies. Yeah. So it was like four of us originally. It grew. And then like MySpace and SR, like at one point, Tyler Whelan was on, Nick Darger, yeah. a bunch of people. And it was going to be like a crew and a company kind of thing and like make random videos. Uh, but eventually, most people that were really in it and like the home base, they either quit writing or just don't really want to pursue it from a, a social media or content perspective. Yeah. So slowly, like when Instagram came out, I made it more for the whole crew. Yep. And then slowly I was the only one really doing anything. So it just kind of morphed into Your now it's me. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's not the catchiest name. I might think of yeah. something else for the website or yeah series or something. But but everyone knows you as that now. So yeah. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm kind of pigeonholed into it, but yeah, yeah, you cool. kind of are. I got the tattoo. Yeah, you got the tattoo. You're yeah. committed at this point, so yeah, I accept it. No, that's that's awesome. Um, what ha- opportunities have you gotten through the vault that um, are like interesting? That like you are, like, are memories that you cherish, kind of things. Oh, the vault has been amazing. I got to learn so much about like the back end of the industry, uh, finances, like. Uh, if there's a part sold out, like what that means, like yeah. at a certain point there was like shortages of parts yeah. and the industry had too many parts when everyone was playing Fortnite yep. and it got pretty screwy there. And then it was pretty cool to see uh, almost like the whole psychology of going from Fortnite to COVID yeah. is when everyone was blowing up and staying inside playing video games, 
no one scootered. I heard about uh, like Ronka had to close, but then I was talking to the owner of Ronka, and they said all youth sports closed. Like there wasn't enough people for baseball, soccer, like yeah. everything. Really? Yeah, like the community youth sports, like local soccer league, there wasn't enough people to even have a local soccer league in Bakersfield. That's so crazy. That's how much people were indoors and doing nothing. And then from COVID when it was, hey, stay inside and do nothing. Yeah. Like it's almost like the, I want to do what you tell me not to do. Exactly. So then we, like the whole scooter industry did pretty darn good during COVID. Yeah. And hopefully everyone was out there being safe. But I know in LA it was a lot of skate parks were closed. But we're like, hey, we're getting our physical activity. We're getting our vitamin D. Yeah. And like we're staying small groups so if we went to the park and there was a large group we would go to another park but yeah if there's enough to be like our distance apart and we're outdoor we were fine with it sorry if that scares you yeah no it's like it's totally like be being outside and getting some exercise is really important as far as like defending yourself against covid like getting yeah. exercise and and like tried to like keep us all inside which i don't think helped too much in some cases um but yeah, if you want to talk COVID, we can get matt grippy out here and he'll go off yeah he'll he will go off for sure <laughs> yeah i know it was been an interesting time for sure um is what did you see as far as like the industry and shortage of parts and stuff that covid brought on like how did that kind of hurt you guys uh we had a we had a good year like okay pretty much was it hard to get parts um the last year during COVID, I was much less hands-on and kind of working from home and uh, doing my progression out of my normal job at the vault. Yeah. Before, I was working on the website in the background, and uh, we've launched uh, one new website since I was there, and then like a whole new platform change, and then did a ton of work on our old one. So it was really stressful, and if I was doing it for like – uh, a normal job like wearing a suit and tie or yeah. remoting in i could have been making more money but the fact that i was like going into the vault hanging out with scooter riders made it all worth it i just uh i decided hey getting old i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna take a take a step back away from a potential career or job yeah and then chase scootering a little bit yeah so i'm getting ready for my last hurrah on scootering since i'm about to be in the 3 club yeah what do you see kind of for yourself in the future uh, so I bought a bus, a shuttle bus, and I'm going to okay. convert it out, live in it, me and my girl and my dog, and uh, hopefully travel around. For a while, I was, like, emceeing a lot of contests. Yeah. Um, but between getting too busy at work and then just less contests for a little bit, uh, it kind of fell by the wayside. I did one in AZ Grind a couple months back. And oh, it was you awesome. did the AZ Grind comp? Yeah, yeah. So it was good to be back on the mic, and there's some talk about potentially being able to do some more coming up, so I'm fingers crossed for that, but... Yeah, hopefully there's a lot more contests now that COVID's yeah. kind of on the downhill. So that'd be awesome because the uh, the lack of contests has – it's been Did They weird. didn't do it with the video contest. That's though. what I mean. They kept people going. Jared's like, been Ole's doing a great it. job. Jared's been killing yeah, it. Yeah, Dissidents did one. Fees did one. Yeah. Um, I think there was another one. It, like, made people innovate. Yeah. And so that was cool. I think that kind of also would help with how we're talking about Instagram taking over earlier. Yeah. Um, I think seeing their their favorite riders going out and doing these parts, I mean, it's still rough to see that it's not getting the views it used to. Yeah. Um, but I have noticed one video, one video part from the last couple of years has the views that it should. Really? Br Brian Noyes. Yeah. Check out the view count on that. Brian Noyes deserved that. I don't know what made that one explode. Well, I mean, it's a killer edit. Yeah. But I feel like it, it broke through and, Something. and reached that the audience it should have like otherwise yeah. you'll see like pretty decent video parts and like check out trend kill collective if you're not and yeah there's there's not a ton of views but i mean it's awesome that they put on these projects and everything but the brian noise it got the recognition it deserved so there's still yeah. hope yeah except you got to be to that caliper so yeah i'm for ready sure. for 2000 i love views. what trend kill's doing too what matt mckean's doing with trend yes. kill is just promoting those smaller edits that would get n almost no views mm -hmm. if they were posted on their personals there's so many scenes that trend kill has introduced me to that i would have had no idea about yeah exactly so it's just like cool to have that platform it's kind of almost like i think of it as like the thrasher of scootering mm -hmm. kind of thing with that just accessibility of different edits in different places yeah um and i love what all these companies have been doing as far as like sending riders to film video parts in different places. I've gotten to see a lot of different stuff that way. Um, I missed the old 
the this is scootering videos were phenomenal mm -hmm. but i almost missed the coalition videos because i liked seeing every how different people from different places around the world hit the same spots how do you feel about that oh because it's all in the same it's place. all in the same place hmm i when the first coalitions were happening i was like yeah uh like a week or two weeks of filming like that that's sick this last one for 30 days i yeah. couldn't imagine my body taking that yeah right and i mean just the edits spoke for themselves uh and it, it just pushed the bar so much it did like it's inspiring and also like uninspiring at the same time it's like <laughs> all right why am i gonna go film that clip yeah I was exactly thinking about, like what's out there but again you gotta like almost time capsule it especially you're not going to go like, oh, look at what I did on my Instagram, especially when Instagram might not exist later. Yeah. You got to scroll through your feed. It's forgotten. Uh, versus you can just type it in on YouTube and look it up. Yeah. That's for coalition versus this is scootering. Yeah. I wonder if they'll do like a flip flop. Yeah, that'd be nice. Because I know they, they couldn't like fly people around, so they couldn't do a oh, coalition. Oh, that makes sense. Because of COVID. Yeah. So that's why they okay. did this is scootering is because they couldn't like get everybody in the same place. Duh. I, that never crossed my mind. I didn't really think about it. Yeah. But I just thought they were like, oh, let's try something. Let's do 30 days in your hometown. And it's not only going to showcase the different riders, but the different areas, areas. geographically, yeah. like who, what they got. So, that's you know, awesome. it's interesting. The coalition, because it was supposed to be in, I think, like Japan or something. Was this last year's? It might have been China. It might have been China. Yeah, yeah. that was what, was what it was. It was one of those Asian countries, but uh, that would have been cool. But then it got canceled because of COVID. They yeah, this I mean, you could instead. keep the ethic at it. They did one in China. Oh, yeah, so that's, that's probably right. why yeah. they're like, let's go back to China. Yeah, yeah for sure, because there's a lot of cool spots around there. What would have, like, what advice would you tell yourself if you were 20? Switching gears here. If I was 20, uh, buy Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Bitcoin's yeah. blown up. Not right now. Now yeah. it went down again, but I remember seeing like a video of a high school student that made it rich off of Bitcoin like ten years ago, and I was like, "Oh, I missed it." And if I had done it then, yeah, I got it. Like, oh, whatever. If you would have done it then, then otherwise, you would be any other advice? I probably would say do some more video parts. Yeah. Um, just because I only have a couple out there, and uh, just some more like long form content. Yeah, like, and most of my stuff is primarily skate parks because yeah i like to ride skate parks like i'm not ashamed of it in the streets yeah. it's pretty fun um and if i have a goal or like i know what spots we're going to it's a little bit more fun yeah but if i just meet up with a crew and it's kind of random it's almost like just like two three spots max uh and a lot of downtime while someone's working on it yep and i like to be busy if i'm around so i'll just find myself like exploring around the area yeah uh, but sure. trips, filming trips are really cool. So that's another thing yeah, okay. that I got to do with the vault is I got to go on. What trips have you gone on? The main one was we did something called the Tater Tour. We went up to Idaho when they built that new skate park. Uh, I think it might have been Matt Grippy's idea just because he's like, hey, I'm going to Idaho. Like, yeah. Really sweet. And I can't remember if he rode with us or met us there. Um, and that was awesome. I definitely planned too many ride days. Like, we were going way too hard. It was like sleep wake up get to a town ride day all right next town same so, thing did yeah. too many but the video ended up pretty cool got to ride a, ride a ton of new skate parks meet a ton of new people so that was probably the most scooter trippy one and then we also yeah. did um uh the portland and seattle jam i think the year prior yeah so that was really cool too and that time we got an airbnb and stuff the idaho tour it was more like rough and tumble guys yeah so we we bought a big tent like a 10 person tent and just found spots to camp up yeah okay yeah. so it was that really cool otherwise what other cool stuff in the vault i mean just meeting uh i mean kids flying it and they love it so yeah. it's, that's humbling um since i got to be on the youtube a lot like, I got a lot of my fan base from that, and that's cool. Like, yeah, that's cool. Like, I don't do anything crazy anymore, so the yeah. kids come up to me, and they recognize me. I'm that's like, pretty wow. sick. Wow. Like, that's awesome. They always think I own the vault, though. Oh, like, really? There's a couple kids here this week. They're like, didn't you leave the vault? I'm like, no, I'm just, like, in a different state. I'm still with the vault, still ride for him. Yeah. Because like, what do you mean? He owns the vault. I'm like, no, not No, I vault. don't own the vault. <laughs> no, not me. Just That'd the face rad. of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm one of them. Yeah, right? Yeah. Now less so, but... Mm -hmm. And then when I'm traveling around, I hope to, like, uh, do, like, scooter checks with people for it and then have them in the bus, do a podcast with them. Yeah. 
And then just sorry, folks, if you think I'm a street elitist or whatever, but I'll be doing vlogs. <laughs> yeah, no, you got you got yeah. to. I think they're they're super fun. Nothing too crazy. Not every day, but no. You know, if I'm oh driving around and I'm props bus. to anybody that daily uploads. Holy crap, is that a job? I don't know how. Like I'm just trying. Right now, I got some clips here. Yeah. And then just uh, sit down and edit something for Instagram every day. I'm like, eh. Yeah. And plus, Instagram's on the decline right now, so. Yeah. Well, they're trying to reform their whole platform, which is going to be interesting to see uh, what they end up doing with that. But yeah, natural. You on TikTok? I am on TikTok a little bit. Do you do like the the woe or whatever? What's the woe? I, I have done really some cringy stuff on TikTok. Heck yeah. But you have to. Like yeah, you I, have have to. A, I have a TikTok and I haven't cringed it up yet. Oh, yeah. I'm just to. I'm just hanging on. Yeah. But for sure, yeah, no, I hit when all I'm traveling, trends. I'm going to be I'm going to be cringy. Oh, you have okay. to be. That's part of TikTok. Like, I've already reached maximum cringe. If you go to the vault of YouTube and watch the luck of the Irish custom build, like I break character like 20 <laughs> times in that video because I'm just like, oh, man, are we really? Are we really doing yeah, this right I'm now? Yeah, I'm like wearing the leprechaun yeah. get up. And I'm just like, man, I hate myself right now. All right, guys, <laughs> let's get so some good. wheels. So it was fun. That's that's funny. Yeah, the, that kind of leads me into like, how did you guys come up with the idea for the custom builds? And how That was before my time. Okay. Um, I don't know where it originally started. Because I think the vault did it before anybody else did, didn't you guys? I think so, but I don't know if like skate or bike people did it first. Mm -hmm. or I don't know if it was just the owner just on top of it. I was like, you know, it'd be sweet. Like these kids love building whole scooters. Let's show them what's possible and then yeah. just sell that scooter. Yeah. But it, it ended do up. Do skate companies do that? Do they take like pros that come in and then they'll like build a board and then sell it as a complete? Um, they'll do that a lot with content. Like, like they'll do a giveaway or they'll, they'll like post on Instagram and they'll like build a board. It'll be all the guys that are you know, like NHS. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, they'll have like a really fun album. They'll make a board. They'll skate it for a bit in the studio and then they'll build the board. Oh, okay. So they skate the board and then they sell it. Yeah, yeah. We don't okay. ride ours. Yeah. We've had a couple people who uh, uh, yeah, are sick. predominant in the sport and then they come in and then they. We had one do a board slide immediately after building it. We're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, whoever but got it, it was part still of so the part of the. We game, just added sure. it to the title, like board slid by. Board slid so by so and so. So that's the scratches on the bottom. Yeah, exactly. I'm looking. I like for that custom idea build though. Number one. Yeah. Oh, that was customer custom. So seven years ago. Yeah. Was that you, you sell complete yeah i think we discounted a little bit like that but usually they like it because they get to say hey this was on that's that scooter from and right now we episode. only do one off we keep toying with the idea okay. of saying hey we'll keep building it <clears throat> yeah like yeah from that video so, but right now it's just one off uh if it's someone important we'll have them sign it but they get to go always pull up the video and be like look that's yeah. my scooter like, I still get DMs from kids like, do you recognize this? And, like, it's custom build 230. I'm like, that's rad. Yeah. Like, it, that's so cool rad. that you get that. That's cool because it's just a connection with, like, the company and the people, you know, especially someone, like, if they look up to you or, like, that company specifically, like, it gives such a tight bond with them. Like, this yeah. is more than just a scooter, you know? This mm. is something that they, they built, that they, like, put together and that now I get to continue to follow. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's then, totally just that uh, that connection between the rider and the uh, company? and the comp company. What do you mean? The rider and the company. The rider and the their fan base. Oh, for and the custom build. Yeah, for the custom builds. I so mean, they like the, the. I think the rider as well with the company. Yeah, like that's true. And then I just looked it up. Custom build number one was seven years ago. So I don't know if we were the first to do that. Uh, but it was seven and years scootering, ago. pretty sure. But who knows if it was other. Yeah. Yeah. So seven years of custom builds. And then we had a guy who YouTubed primarily. Like, that was his thing. And yeah. he came in and he made the vault, like, very official. And uh, that's when we went through, like, an explosive era because it was, like, the Tanner Fox blow up, too. Yeah. So, and he was in the YouTube scene. So he knew it was uh, the the popular trends and stuff. So that's that's our really YouTube y era when he was part of us. But, yeah. I mean, it was fun to do. Yeah, definitely. They they've like scooter they've, trivia's. We did like one of my favorite was like the Bean Boozle challenge. Like that's it's so oh, lame, yeah. but it was so fun. Yeah, like it's okay to be lame sometimes. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, as if it's entertaining, it doesn't really matter if it's like, lame. And those 
Those jelly beans, they did almost make me puke. They are I gross, did. dude. You've had them? Yes, I've had them. Which one got you? The. Mm, I'll never forget. Um, typically, the bar for it's like the, the, is it smelly socks? The smelly uh, socks. I think it's one. smelly no. socks or stinky feet. I yeah. think I handled that one all right. I don't know if I got the barf one, but I for sure I got the spoiled milk one. Oh, that one's rough, yeah. And they nailed it. Yeah. I don't know what. I don't know what those what they're doing. Flavor engineers are yeah, doing, but, but that is that is too much. It it's was, like the worst part is it's like sweet. It was horrendous. They take like savory flavors Ugh. and they make the bad version of them, and then they make it. They put sugar on top. I really don't awful. think I've bought jelly beans since that even. No, like jelly yeah. beans were a good movie snack. And I think they ruined it for you. The jelly bean. Belly, you ruined your own industry. You, we you got these amazing your YouTube company. videos, but yeah. Now I don't want jelly beans. Yeah, outside outside of scootering, what do you do? What do you find yourself doing? Um, I play too many video games, so I'm working on that. Yeah. Um, what do you play? Right. Uh, pff, before I came here, I I uninstalled like 75 percent of my library because <laughs> jeez, I was like, I'm supposed to be building the bus right now and editing yeah. videos, and then just after getting out of the heat and working on the bus for like an hour and dying of heat exhaustion, in there and I'm playing video games. I'm like, no, I should just edit. So. Yeah. I installed everything, so I play nothing. I have Pipe BMX. That's a good one to mess around on since yeah. it's not online and it's still getting developed. So gotcha. It's not super intense, but otherwise, sh- video games are too fun, man. Video games are so much fun. I uh, I used to have a really bad addiction for the most. I can call it an addiction. Yeah, I'd call it an for addiction. Sure. I have that'd, an be, that'd be that'd be the words. I use. Like, I'm 30, and I still ride a Razor scooter. So, obviously, when I like something, I, <laughs> yeah. I pursue it heavily. Yeah. But yeah. Other than that, I have so many interests, but I don't really send them to full-length, uh, full-on hobbies. Yeah. So, right now, it's pretty much just uh, figuring out the the bus conversion, um, scootering, and then... How long it. have you had the beard? I knew you ever going to shave it. Oh, I shave it all the time. Oh, I really? shaved it yesterday. I mean, like... Shave it, shave it. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. What? Yeah, I almost shaved it yesterday. I change my look all the time. You almost shaved it yesterday? Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. I feel like I haven't seen you without a beard. Oh, you can find it on the vault YouTube. I'm fully bald and no beard. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I changed it up. I went long hair that was like down to here. Then I did dreadlocks. Then I undid the dreads. Then I did dreads again. Then I got a really nice haircut. Yeah. And then I did a mohawk. Then I was bald. (laughs) I did a mohawk again, and then now I haven't I haven't cut it since. So this wow. is probably like two years of hair growth, and then this current beard, you know, three months, four months. Oh, okay, jeez. I don't know. Yeah, I change yeah. it all the time. Nice. Yeah, this, that's awesome. You can find some really bad pictures of me out there. <laughs> that's good. What do you regret the most? For hairstyles. For hairstyles. Oh, uh, when I played Scooter Brad in uh, Scoot yeah. or Vault. For the YouTube channel, I had uh, a West Coast Choppers mustache. Yeah. It looks so terrible. But <laughs> yeah. Once you have a full beard and then you're like, okay, I'm going to shave it. Like, yeah. I cannot resist the urge to be like, what am I going to do this time? Yeah. And I'll, I'll probably do it again. And that was that was it. Yeah. And then even worse than that, I don't think there's any YouTube videos of me up there with it. There's a couple on my Instagram. Yeah. Is It was similar to the West Coast Chopper, but my beard was much fuller. And the mustache goes down, and then right here, it's like two big ham hocks. <laughs> oh, my god! Yeah, my girlfriend hated it. She was like, never again. I'm like, it probably will happen again. Yeah. It's too much fun. <laughs> That's so funny, for sure. Yeah, but now I want to be on this new wave with the kids, too, of dyeing the hair again. I used to do that all crazy when I was really? a kid. Really? Yeah, I don't really like it as much on long hair. Like, maybe I'll do the half dye. Yeah, but That's always like cool. When I was a kid, I, I had that scene phase a little bit, so I was like crazy color hair and stuff. One yeah, time I, been, I did my beard like a watermelon. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. I don't know if it was How sick. How do beards die? Does it, does it, I does bleached it. it and does, then but does the color did, come out all right? Because I feel like yeah. I feel like that's like hard, like hardier hair than like your yeah, hair. Yeah. I mean, it looked like a watermelon. That's so sick. Yeah. It's just green. I did a little strip of brown, red, and then some black dots for the seeds. <laughs> I don't know what I was on, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's so I'm funny. still doing it. So if you ever see something, you're like, yeah. what the heck? Just, no, it's, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, well, I mean, hair grows back, so you can always shave it. Oh, yeah, so exactly. Especially being a guy, like, uh, whatever. Oh, yeah. Get rid of it. I don't care too much about my looks. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, no. Um, what, 
have you experienced through scootering or what has scootering taught you that uh, you use today, like outside of scootering, like just life lesson kind of things? Uh, community is very cool. Uh, if I didn't have the scooter community, I'd definitely have to join some sort of like adult sport or something. Yeah. Cause just like the camaraderie and going to win. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, more accepting of other people. Cause I remember just growing up and just getting like pure hate and just not understanding it. Yeah. So like, that's cool when people are experiencing just bullying or anything. I'm like, yeah, I've been there, done that. And yeah. it gets through it. And then, um, probably perseverance i mean i know i'm not since i never filmed video parts or anything i've never had like a dream trick and i die on it 10 times like i get over yeah. it pretty quick but just overall progression at least there when i could still bounce off the concrete like it was cool yep. to just just know the more i do something the better i'll get yeah like whether it's music like i have a guitar i don't play it that much because i know i'm gonna get obsessed with it yeah and then uh, there's just so much cool stuff to do out there like woodworking art like anything creative yeah and i may not have the skills now but i know just like thinking back where did i start in scootering and when i truly wanted to how naturally it came just putting in the effort yeah so like that's almost the same thing with like right now i'm not doing vlogs i'm not hitting the social media too hard yeah and just knowing that okay well once i make that my priority i think if i'm true and honest and at least doing what i like i think it could be appreciated so if you're not focusing on those things right now, what are you focusing on? Wait, oh, oh, I just ride my scooter. Just riding your scooter? Yeah. yeah. Do the bus life. Okay, yeah, because do girl. you have the bus? I have the bus. I'm in the process of converting it. Okay, what kind of bus is it? It's a shuttle bus. Oh, okay. Take you to the airport. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So far, it's been pretty slow. Just trying to think about the future. Yep. But uh, So you're planning to live out of that in the future? Yeah. So the current goal is I want to do at least a year. Okay. But... If I hate it and the girlfriend hates it, then probably max out at about a year. Yeah. But I have a feeling it could be a year to three years. And if from there um, we find a way to make money on the road or we're loving it or we want to keep doing it, I'll uh, take my funds and reinvest towards getting – I would want something a little bit more off-road capable. Yeah. Even okay. though it will be a tighter space. Yeah. But there's so many options out there. So who knows? At the end of this, maybe we're going to decide we want to be gypsies – for another five years yeah. or after that three years then um scootering will probably just be more of my background hobby and then yeah. not worried about getting clips or something yeah because uh it is it is sometimes a little bit frustrating like having a sponsor and having these um these goals and like what i need to put out and saying okay i'm still trying to be involved in the industry yeah uh, so i need to put out this content sometimes yeah. it is frustrating and it feels a little forced to go get stuff and I mean, that's what I tell the kids all the time that send a sponsor at it when they really aren't ready for a sponsor is like, like, hey, don't make it everything because, I mean, the the talent out there is crazy. So, like, yeah, like keep keep applying yourself. Send me your next video. I'll give you a critique. I have one kid. I should have like two kids that send me a video every like six months and they, they still ask to be sponsored. But like, yeah. just give them critiques and like keep on sticking it out. Um, shoot, I lost my train of thought on that one. No, yeah, you're good. Uh, Talking about, like, scooter. Yeah, edit. so sometimes it's really hard to get back to the true love of it. Yeah. Uh, Woodward's definitely good because I'm around so many people riding. Yeah. Um, I, You just get, like, monkey see, monkey do. Like, I get inspired by someone doing a trick. So that's really good. But in, in the desert, it's hard to go out there and ride. Yeah, Some of the homies sure. ride Especially during the right day. Now. And I'm like, I don't know how you do it. Yeah. Um, But then... Uh, I met this dude Clint here at Woodward. Yeah, Clint's wild. And he's he's awesome. Yeah, like his riding style, I love. It's my type of riding. Uh -huh. And then he was doing something wild, and I was gonna go put it up on like the Vault Story because like, oh yeah, I'm here representing the Vault. Like some crazy scootering. Let's start up on the Vault Story. And he's like, oh no thanks, I'm good. Yeah. Just, just riding for fun. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's sweet. Like yeah. even even when I'm in the zone and I'm riding having fun, I'll do like a couple things. But in the back of my mind. I'm like, okay, I should film that for Instagram. Yeah, the same way for me. Yeah. So that, that I is wish a I had annoying. that mindset. I still love it. I wish I had that mindset like he does where it's just like, I just, just ride. Riding. For fu he just has fun. He's, He's just riding. having fun. Yeah. He doesn't care. He's like, I don't want it following or anything. He's like, I just have fun jumping off of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's awesome. So that was, that was good for the bones, good for the heart. 
this yeah. whole watching Clint ride. Yeah. Especially I was a little sore that night. Uh-huh. I tried to show off and the demo came up short. Yep. And uh, just watching him ride and just not giving a care, just yeah. and climbing up stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's scootering. That is scootering. This is scootering. This is scootering, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I was uh, actually with the van life thing. I was talking to a guy who was traveling around in a van. He'd been doing it for like three or four years, just like that. Just like didn't have a job, would like make the guy at camp here. No, not the guy at camp here. I met a guy who was traveling through Rapid, Rapid City, where Mm -hmm. I live. So it's just like um, he was talking about how he just like loved just traveling around in his van. He just like that's just how he is. So it's it's weird to meet those gypsies and see their different lifestyle because like you don't even know it exists until you like see it i've been obsessed with it for a while like when i moved out to la i did a conversion on my little tiny truck yeah really it was just a sleeping area storage area yeah that's all i had room for because it was me and my 50 pound dog oh so i mean i've already lived in a terrible condition before so having the girlfriend with me will be awesome and then having the more space of the shuttle bus yeah i'm looking forward to it yeah, for sure. Well, well, it makes every day more exciting. Like, I'll find myself at home, sometimes sleeping. I want to do, like, a... Um, staying up too late. Yeah, I want to do, like, a national park tour with, like, a bus sometime. Yeah, our old roommates, they got us the best going away gift. They said, once you're ready for the road, they're like, we're paying for one year of your national park pass. So no way. Shouts out to the old roomies. That's sick. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I almost cried. Yeah, That's well, nice. there you go. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for coming on again. Uh, What's your story? Co- have you told the podcast your story? I really haven't, but... I'm curious. When did you start riding? I started riding in about 2012, I think. What got you started? Um, I was with my neighbor, and we had Razor A models, and we would ride... Actually... Were they... What year? So they were the bad A models. They were the bad A models. Yeah. Yes, the bad A models. Um, but this was like before we could do anything like we were doing 180s bunny hops trying to throw tail whips just like the original like messing around yeah. like before you i didn't even know scootering existed at this did time. you action sports at all before that uh bmx snowboard okay skate, so you got the right skateboard idea. yeah i had all the yeah, wheels that's, that's how i started i was like oh another thing to mess around on yeah exactly so i did i did all that and then um i kind of we looked up on youtube pro scootering and i think there was like a couple razor edits and then like a brendan smith edit or Ooh, something like that that'll get you going yep so we watched that and uh i'm like oh my gosh it's actually like a sport behind this so after, how soon after that did you go to the skate park or were you already going to the skate park at that i time? went to toys r us and i got a razor black label 2.0 and then i went to the skate park it was like the next day. Like, after I that. am Brandon Smith. You're like, exactly. That's how he did. All right, I'm gonna go for 18 tail ups. Yeah, exactly. One around. And then yeah, I could like learn how to drop in and like all like that basic stuff, and that was sick. And then did that for four months, and then got a NV KOS before they had like the heist and the charge, mm-hmm. just the KOS. So I just got the KOS and rode that for a year, and like all my friends started getting them too, and we had like this whole squad. We started making YouTube videos. It was sick. But actually, like, before all that happened, back before that neighbor moved in, I had these other neighbors, and we would conduct these scooter shows. And, like, 2000 – it must have been, like, 2007. Would you put out the, the X-Factor plastic ramps? No. You, no, we had bricks and, like, a, two a, by four, yeah, a piece of plywood. By four, yeah. a, pe- a little piece of plywood. How many times did you go through the wood? Never. because we, we were, like, okay. 60 pounds. And it was yeah, a thick piece of plywood. We used to run through the neighborhoods on bulk trash day and find wood and doors and just lay yeah. them up against walls. Slash on them and yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, we'd do these little scooter shows, and I'd bring, like, my parents' food from outside their house and then sell it to them to make money. <laughs> <laughs> That's rad. We'd invite all the people from the neighborhood over because my driveway was big. Hustling and putting on demos. Exactly. We were doing little demos. That's and sweet. all the old neighbor guys would, like, come over, and they'd, like like, to watch us kids, like, doing our thing and like lemonade stands and stuff and we'd sell lemonade it was it was like we put on a little show a little That's demo awesome. it was so like fun that. yeah uh, so that was like way before i even started like thinking about doing it like more than just that mm. it's just me and my friends riding around we would do like skateboard tricks and everything else so that was cool that's kind of how and i just stuck with it yeah i just stuck with it did After you ever I got have that, a like a declining period or a period where you stepped away from it mm-hmm. i had a three three month period um why why? Well, I don't really know. Um, probably video games. Uh, my friends started doing other things, so I just kind of yeah. Like, it's hard to have the motivation. Like I was like riding with a crew, especially like if you're in the same this uh, level of riding, or yeah, close to it, or you got one guy who's better. 
That's when you use. Well, I, I started out magic. with like these three or four kids, and then they kind of like moved on and did like start doing other things. Mm. And uh, then I got like these new friends and a new crew, and then they started like riding with me. And that's in between those two was when I like kind of stepped away for a little bit. Yeah, I almost quit before the TSI deck. I just broke too many Razor Ultra Pros. Yeah. Like for Christmas, I was like, all I want is Ultra Pros. And I, nothing else. Like, I want what? like 20 I, of them. I was like, yeah, I only got three. Yeah. But there was one store, brick and mortar store, that would sell the Ultra Pro, like still foldable. Yeah. And um, I would just buy as many as you can. I got three and I was like, dang, I was hoping for four. Yeah. I was still thankful. How long I, would they I, last you? I'm guessing like maybe a month, two months. Oh, okay. But I remember that batch went really close, and I'll guess with just how frustrated I was, it was like maybe a month max. Yeah. And just when those three broke, I was just so bummed, and I was getting into biking, and I, I was just like, all right, I'm gonna start biking. Like, yeah. It lasts, and um, fairly soon after that, TSI decks came out. Oh, and that's what okay. kept me scootering. I already had the Wii bars from Estonia. I paid like 180 bucks for T bars. Yeah. Just because there was none. Rad wasn't making them at the time. Yeah. And uh, had like one metal core. The other one was hot glued wheels. Yeah. And then the TSI deck came out. I got an inward fork that was ugly as heck, but <laughs> yeah. basically solid steel. But yeah, but and not so gonna that break. scooter would last me about just under three months and felt yeah. bigger, more solid, like a bike. Yeah. And that's the only reason I kept going. If those came out like a year later, I probably wouldn't even be scootering anymore. Wow. Yeah. You'd be in so a... So TSI saved me. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to TSI. Yes, sir. That's that's awesome. And then you said something that made me want to change my answer for uh, what's the biggest change in scootering is introduction, is the fact that you can go spend 150 bucks. Even 100 bucks will get you a decent thing, but... If you can get to two hundred dollars, yeah, that scooter right there, I would have killed to have that in the starting days. Like, yeah, it's insane. So I think, yeah, I was saying the the technology of parts and stuff, but even just a complete the, scooter is so good. The completes have gotten so much good. And like so, if you so said much we're better. gonna take your kneecaps unless you only ride a complete scooter, there's three completes on the market that I'd be fine with riding every day. I know they're bigger now. Yeah, which is awesome because they used to be yeah so small, but now they've like made like. A lot of these companies have made like 28 tall completes, mm -hmm. which is awesome because it yeah, can unless you're over six feet, you don't need taller. No, no, you don't. But they 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 exist. Yeah. So that's what's cool is so that like, you can get kind of some of those older crowd into scootering. It doesn't have to just be the kids. Oh yeah. So there's finally an answer when a six foot tall guy emails us at the vault like, "Is there a scooter for me?" And we're like, "Yes." Yes. Yes. There, there finally is. is. Yeah, you got it. But I felt so bad when he'd be like, hey, I'm six foot two, 200 pounds. Can I get the Prodigy? I'm like, you can, but you're going to hate it. Yeah, you're not going to enjoy it. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, where can we follow you? Uh, www.youtube.com slash, actually, I don't know what my URL is. I think it's my old gaming channel name. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's dead. It better be dead. If not, I'm going to go erase it. Yeah. Uh, if you just look up the grape slushies on YouTube, all one word, or you can space it out. I've Hopefully, I'm the only the grape slushies yeah. out there. Uh, Instagram, the grape slushies. Made a TikTok. Not doing cringe stuff yet, but stay tuned. It'll be there. And then uh, probably right before I start traveling stuff, we'll we'll get some apparel going. Yeah. Got a couple uh, stickers coming out soon, some grip tape. So Perfect. Looking pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thank you again for coming on. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you guys for listening again. If you could please, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment about what you think about the podcast, if there's anything that I can change to make better. That's always what I'm trying to do here. And if you're on Apple Music, five stars really would help out and leave a comment down below. Same thing as on YouTube. Um, and yeah, guys, have like, a great- subscribe. I almost didn't subscribe to you because you're at 69 subscribers, but I was Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I looked it up on the way down here. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I got to subscribe. And I just hovered for a second. Yeah. Like, it's, it's at 69. It's like, all right, I'm 70. I'm yeah. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry you're not 69, yeah. man. Yeah. No, yeah. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day, guys. Thank you. Peace.